Hello everyone, this is the Crimson Cure, welcoming you to the Crimson Tower, a place where we keep a feminine foot on the neck of the gynocracy, feminism, and black male misandry. So go ahead, pull up a chair, stay a while, and listen. Look, like a- Hello, oh may I help you? Hey, Habibi, look, my hang low ain't working like it's supposed to. You got any of them sex pills? May I randomly suggest one of these genetic products? Nah. You should take the A-game, little bro. Bling, bling for the ding, ding. Nah. You shouldn't be taking that poison, little bro. Here, try one of mine. Yes, yeah, right. A-game will make a girl give you her credit card number. It is very true. Plus, it's an all-natural solution for men. Not like these gas station pills gonna make your manhood shrivel up and fall off. Oh my golly, he's right. A-game is an all-natural solution for men. And you take it, and it gives you energy, and libido, and your vitality will be out the roof. I feel it kicking in already. I'm gonna go home and show my girl. Okay, but don't forget to drink 16 to 32 ounces of water. Hey, baby. Ooh, look who brought their A-game. And the A is for apocalypse, because I'm about to blow your back up. <laughs> Ooh, I love it when you bring your... Hello there, my Crimsonites, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel. I am, of course, your host, the Crimson Cure. And as usual, we're just going to jump into the topic. And the title, When Black Women Blame the Absent Father. Um, the last couple of videos that I've been dropping have been getting a lot of comments, which is wonderful. But the comments that I've received under the video, I Know Where All the Masculine Men Went, which you can check out right here, um, have been inter interesting. They've been thought provoking. They've been like, hmm. Um, but in some of the comments, I found that it was like, well, you're blaming the mothers for this. What about the fathers that aren't there? Here's what I don't think a lot of black women understand when they try to deflect and say that the children, when they have bad outcomes with just the mother and the fathers aren't around, what they're really doing is admitting that their motherhood doesn't work without men. The motherhood is a failure without men, because if you're saying that a man's absence in his child's life is so detrimental that no matter what you do, the child is going to have a bad outcome nine times out of 10, then that means that your motherhood is ineffective. And it is ineffective specifically because there is no man there to set the leadership and the system order and structure. So with that being understood that if I say, well, my child didn't turn out right because the father wasn't there and I was alone to raise a child. See, on the one hand, you want to be a victim because of that. And you like to use that rhetoric because it makes you a victim in your eyes, but it also makes you inept. It also makes your motherhood inept, ineffective, and unnecessary and unable to you're you're what you're really saying is you're unable to rear a child without their father so with that being understood why do you run the fathers away if you know that you're incapable of raising a proper child with better outcomes more often than not by yourself then why do you invest so much in energy in keeping the fathers away from their children why do you invest so much energy in having children with men that you barely know and that have probably told you they don't want children or that wasn't even a conversation that was had at all? So why do you do that? If you know that the strong single motherhood trope is a lie and the women overall are unable to raise proper children, especially their sons, then why do you make sure that their fathers can't be around? When he comes around, why do you why do you take your children away? When he asks for the children, why do you deny him to see them? 
if he's seeing the children on the weekend, why are you so strict to come even early to come pick your children up? If he wants to take the children to some event or something like that, why do you make up stories and reasons as to why the children can't participate with their fathers? If you understand that fatherhood is as important as we know it to be, then why are you busy working against it? See, the little rhetoric that a lot of gynocrats like to use to make themselves seem like the victim and try to deflect and make black men look bad, it doesn't really work. Because if the child is under your care, then you can't blame that the, the influence of a parent that isn't there. It doesn't matter why they're not there. You can't blame the influence of a parent that isn't exerting influence. You're exerting influence. And if you exert the influence and your child doesn't turn out very well because of the influence that you exerted, then it's your fault. So you can't have your cake and eat it too, gynocrats. Can't do it. You can't on the one hand, when your child succeeds at something that you think they should succeed at, now you're a strong black independent single mother that did it on her own. But when your child falls through the cracks and becomes a statistic of one sort or another, then and someone takes you to task about your motherhood and the nature of your motherhood. Then you want to deflect and say, well, they didn't have their father in their life. So this is why my parenting failed. Can't have your cake and eat it, too. You got to be consistent with your story. Because either your motherhood is infallible or it isn't. Because as soon as someone challenges you on the outcomes of your children that you've been raising on your own, that you've been telling the whole world that you don't need a man to help you do, then you have to take the bitter with the sweet. If they come out as, a, as statistics in a bad way, then you have to take the blame and not try to shift the blame to a parent that wasn't there to exert influence or did not, was not able to exert influence in the capacity that you did. So it was, it wasn't even 70, 30. It was like 80, 20, 90, 10. Because you made sure that because he had another girlfriend that he couldn't see his kid. I don't want my baby over there with that with her, and I don't even know her. See that type of stuff. And then he say, Well, come meet her. I don't want to meet her. See, see. You gotta stop being a pawn of the system. You have to stop being just a, a puppet on a string because that's what a lot of gynocrats are. That's what a lot of black women who serve the gynocracy are. You're a puppet on the string. You're the ones responsible for effeminizing your boys. It is what it is because heterosexual black men would not allow the effemination of their boys, the effeminization of their boys, excuse me. They wouldn't allow it. They wouldn't allow you to let their sons twerk in any capacity, private or public. They wouldn't allow you to do that. He would instill some type of leadership, some type of structure, some type of order, over that foolishness, but you don't want to be ruled over with order. You like the chaos you live in. So therefore you have children by men who you feel aren't worthy anyway, and don't have good leadership and SOS because you want to be control in control of the relationship dynamic. And if you have a child, you want to be in full control of the child and the outcome of the child. So, okay, be in full control and then take full responsibility with whatever happens with that child. You only like taking responsibility when the child make it to the NBA or the NFL or do something good. But you don't want to take responsibility when the child fails at life because they were unprepared by a, by a unqualified mother. See, some of y'all mothers are unqualified. Just because you birthed a child in this world doesn't make you a qualified mother. It just makes you a birth giver. That's what it makes you. All right. So we're not going to play that game about, oh, well, you know, the absent father, because if the absent father has that much control and influence over the outcome of the child, then you need to admit that your mothering is inept. And worthless, you have worthless mothering skills. So which one you want to admit? 
worthless mothering skills or do you want to take accountability for the children that you insist on raising by yourself? You insist on raising them alone. So then take what happens and realize that it's your fault because you're the one that's supposed to prepare your children for the world and you fail to do so. And as a result of that, your children had many failures in their life. That's on you. You don't get to shift the blame somewhere else. That's you. All right. Go ahead and sound off in the comment section. Is blaming the absent father an admission of bad mothering skills? That's what I want to know. So go ahead, sound off in the comment section. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you have not. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye-bye, Crimsonites. Hey guys, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And if you've got more to say on the topic, leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to support our sponsor who so graciously supports this channel by clicking the description box and the link for A-Game at agameherbal.com. You can go ahead and get a 10% discount off of your next purchase using the code Kendra10. This has been yet another Crimson Cure production, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.